Um, so a little bit about me. My name is Terry. I started my business in 2006. I've been working almost exclusively with WordPress since about 2007. Um, I started a website called the WP Toolbox in 2015. With that, I do tutorial videos on how to do stuff not just specific to WordPress, but also other kinds of things. So email marketing tips, that kind of stuff. Because if you're running a website for your business, it's, you don't only have questions about the website. So I'm trying to cover some of the other topics, too. Um, I am, have two kids. It's a little out of date. I have four cats. Don't ask. <laughs> I'm not turning into the crazy cat lady. Um, and lots and lots of websites I've done. But I do, I like doing things, like I said, with the, with the goal of the WP Toolbox website, is it's not just about websites. So I like all of those other pieces that go along with it, which is why I'm talking about MailChimp today. Um, so the why of MailChimp, why a lot of people go to it, it's user friendly. So if you're not very technical, um, very techy, it's easier to use than some of the other systems. You get responsive um, mobile friendly emails, which is very important. It's got a pretty easy to use interface, lots of ways that it can integrate with other systems. Um, and it has some of the fun stuff that a lot of the bigger, more expensive services offer um, without the bigger, more expensive price tag. And then it's free to get started. So if you're just getting started and you're not really sure what direction your email marketing is going to take, it's a good place to get started and get and feel like you can do the practice and the and the testing of for your own processes without getting worried about that two hundred dollar a month fee. Um, I always like to mention the can spam rules when we talk about email marketing. Um, your email marketing pieces must clearly state that they are an advertisement. Um, then you must have a physical mailing address that people can unsubscribe with. So when you sign up with any email marketing service, it's going to ask you for a physical address. If you work from home and you don't want to put your home address there, then you get a PO box or something like that. But you have to have a physical address so that if somebody wants to unsubscribe from your email, they could send you a postcard, which I never really understood that part of it, but that's kind of why it's there. Um, and you also have to have an easy unsubscribe option, so that's you know the one-click unsubscribe link kind of thing that's usually buried at the bottom. Um, and you have, I think it's 10 days to actually process that unsubscribe. So if you were doing this on your own, sending them out from your own email system, which is totally not recommended, you would have 10 days to actually remove that person from the list. Most email marketing companies, MailChimp included, automatically remove that person. Um, Canadian spam laws, the law was passed in July 2014, but they just officially, like, you have to follow them in 2017, so just this past July. But I always recommend, um, remind people about it too, because we're pretty close to Canada, right? And so if you have people from Canada that could be on your list, you need to be aware of what those um, rules are too. And it's the CASL, Canadian Anti-Spam Law. Um, one of the biggest things that I got from that is you have to have explicit permission which is usually why you need to have the double opt-in um, is good for that. A lot of people don't like the double opt-in because then people don't click the second time and then they're not actually on the list, but it's really protecting you and the quality of your list. So it's a good idea to do it. Um, right, like I said, we're probably going to go over this. It's pretty easy to create an account. Are anybody watching on the video? Hello. Um, you just follow the prompts when you're setting up the account. It's going to ask you for the information to put in. You start with one list. You can have many lists. You can have one list and do everything in groups and segments. Combination of the two, it's entirely up to you. Something to note, though, if you have multiple lists and the same person is on multiple lists, those count as, like, if you have three lists and there's the same person is on each of those, that counts as three subscribers to your total subscriber count. So even if it is the same email address, if it exists on multiple lists, it counts multiple times. Um, I always recommend that people start by customizing their forms to match your branding, because I am tired of looking at really boring gray forms. Um, and the forms that I suggest you start with, pardon me, are your sign-up form. The sign-up form you can use even if you don't have a website. So if you want to get people started on your list and you haven't finished your website yet, uh, MailChimp will give you a URL that you can share on social media, Facebook, print it on your business cards if you want to, like whatever, to get people that can sign up to your list um, even before your website is ready. We're going to talk about the opt-in confirmation email and then the final confirmation email as well as the final confirmation page 
And then we're going to take a look too at the unsubscribe form, which most people kind of don't pay a lot of attention to that, but it's another opportunity to maybe try to reconnect with people before they um, unsubscribe. The double opt-in process means somebody's going to fill out the form on your website. After they fill out the form, they're going to get an email that says, hey, do you really want to sign up for Terry's list? And then they have to click the button. Once they click that button, they're going to get taken to a confirmation page that says, awesome, you're actually on the list. That can be um, either a default kind of starter one that MailChimp gives you, or you can make a custom one on your own website. I prefer the custom one. Again, I have more branding and more control. Um, and then they're also going to get a second email that's their final confirmation email. So if you were doing something like a lead magnet, right? So sign up for my website or sign up for my mailing list and you get this free report or 10 tips or a link to download an audio or whatever. You're going to want to put that link in the final confirmation email and not in that opt-in confirmation email. Because if you put it in the opt-in confirmation email, that's that first one that they get that says, do you really want to be here? They can download whatever your lead magnet is and not actually be on your list. So if you're doing the lead magnet to get people on your list, you want to make sure they don't get it until after they're on your list. Um, double Y, double opt-in, we talked about this just a second ago too. You can, that gives you more grounds to say, yes, this person does actually want to be on my list, right? So that if they hit spam or make a complaint that they didn't sign up to receive those messages from you, but MailChimp tracks the IP address, the date and time that they signed up, all of that information. And with a double opt-in, you have that second layer of confirmation from them that just makes your case a little bit stronger. Okay, so let's jump over and play with some forms. Too many tabs. Okay, so when you first come in, you're gonna go to lists. If you don't have a list yet, you're gonna create a list. You can call it general, you can call it newsletter, you can call it my first list, hello world, like whatever. Um, there are some instances where the visitor can see the name of the list that they are on. So don't call it something that might be offensive because they can see that, right? You don't want to call it like the stupid people list unless people know that they're signing up for the stupid people list, right? You don't want to offend somebody. Um, so, you know, just try to make it descriptive so you know what it is. As you can see here, I have multiple lists. Um, they all operate, can operate as different things then. So let's play with this one just because. And you're, once you click into the list, so whether you have one or several, go into it and you're going to go to sign up forms here. And you want to go to general forms. And this is where we're going to do the customizing to add the branding and stuff. <clears throat> so right here you can see which form you're on. We're going to talk about this. We're going to start with the sign up form, but there's also the confirmation email, the final um, the confirmation page and the final page. This here is your sign-up form URL. So when you're just getting started, this is the e the website, the URL that you can share on social media and stuff for them to go, and they'll go directly to this form. So what they see online will look exactly like this. In fact, if we open this in a new tab, so it's not going to look like your website unless you kind of make it look like your website. That's why the branding and stuff you need to get on here. Um, so you want to start, build it will let you add fields and such to the, to the form for people to sign up with. Um, you can add interest groups that people can, these are hidden, that the little background there says that they're hidden, so I have groups set up on this list, but people can't select themselves into the group. You can also have public groups, so if your blog topic might have multiple things that they would be interested in, you can have public groups. Do you want to hear about us when we talk about cats and dogs and hamsters? Or do you only want to hear about us when we talk about cats, right? Like you can have those different groups and you can make them a hidden thing, which is like these are, or you can make them public so people can select for themselves. But only on, they'll only be able to do that on this form unless you include it in the other forms, like that you would add on your own website. Um, there is some case to be made for not adding a whole lot of fields to your sign-up forms, right? Because if people have to do more work, they're less likely to do it. 
Um, I also have known some marketers that maybe they start off with just, just give me your email address. They're not even asking for a name out of the gate. But later on, they might ask for people to provide additional information. Give me your zip code and your first name and you know, tell me a little bit of information about you. And for the people that have opted to give more information, then they send specialized content to the people that's not available to the people that just did the basic sign up. So there's one way you're kind of giving them something in return for the information, right? Because we're all tired of everybody knowing way too much about us even though we put it all out on Facebook. Uh, so if you give them something, you know, make it a, a valuable trade for them. Um, and then if we go over to the design it part, here's where you can do the customizing. So you have the four different options, the page, the body, the forms, and then the monkey rewards. If you're using the free version of MailChimp, the monkey rewards, the little sent by MailChimp thing is always going to be at the bottom. If you pay for a MailChimp account, you can take that out. <coughs> So you can do, typically this email will start with a gray page background and then just a white box in the middle with some very basic information in it. I hate that. I usually tend up doing like this is a white page background, which would just be this thing here, and you can pick the color that you want. Um, <clears throat> and so that's going to be everything outside that central column for the email. And then if we go over to header, this is, um, well, it's for font size and stuff, but I don't actually have any text in my header. I just have the picture. So depending on what you want, that's where you could change that. And then the outer wrapper, I think I have, I don't actually have that showing on here, so I can't actually demo that. Ha, ha, ha. And then the body is going to be whatever is in this center part here. So again, you can change um, the text color, you can change um, the background color, you can change the link color, those kinds of things to customize it again to match your brand. If you always use, I, I like blues and greens, so I try to make sure that I'm using those colors. If you're always using a specific shade of purple, it reinforces that brand. Um, I always try to recommend you add a picture here at the header of the newsletter. This could be something like the header on your website. If the header on your website is a really big image, you want to find a smaller one. I try not to go any wider than 600 pixels wide. I don't remember where I heard that rule, but that's what I stick with. Um, and then you also want to make sure it's not crazy tall. Because nobody wants to open an email with a picture that takes up, you know, you have to scroll two times just to get past the picture. Nobody wants to do that on their phone. And so just on the sign-up form, um, you can have just this, or you can actually add in a message. So again, if you're directing people here, directly here to sign up, I can't type when people can see what I'm typing. I fail miserably, so pay no attention to that. So you can add in a little customized message or something on there if people are going to be coming directly to the form and not looking at it on your website. And the whole thing just went away. That was weird. Did I somehow close it? No. I think I hit a help button. Okay. I also always make mistakes when people can see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, now, once you have started with the design it stuff for one form, it does carry that through to the other form. So you're not going to have to select the background color and all of that stuff all over again. So if we go to the sign up thank you page, um, this is the page that they'll get taken to right after they sign up. And it'll say, almost finished, you know, we need to confirm your email address. You can use, just you let uh, MailChimp use this page, or you can make one on your own site. Um, for my own website, for my list, I actually have a page on my site that says, you're awesome. And I kind of did like a screenshot of what the email looks like in their inbox with the button and the, the right color and all of that stuff and like big arrows pointing to where it's supposed to go. I mean, I'm sure people can figure it out, but it, I wanted something, again, on my own site that I have control of that fits into my branding and personality and all that kind of thing. Um, and if you want to use your own 
a page on your own site, you would put it, the URL for that here in this text box. Um, and so then like the final welcome email, same kind of thing. This is where if you have a lead magnet, this is where you would put it, right? So your subscription has been confirmed, here's your free gift, and you can include then a link to the PDF that's sitting on your website or on Dropbox or in a Google Drive file that's shareable or however you want it. Um, I think you can upload some content to MailChimp, but it can't be a very large file. So if you're giving away a free audio, MailChimp probably isn't the place to host that. Put that in um, a, you know, a shareable Dropbox folder or a Google Drive or something like that. Um, and then it, this part down here that I can't edit, that's stuff that they automatically include and you can't take that out. So you just kind of work with it. You can ignore it, you can make reference to it, whatever. And the final, the confirmation page, again, they can show one or you can put in, go up, a URL for a page on your site. So if you want to offer that lead magnet, this can be a page on your own website where people can download it as well as get the email. Um, I prefer to give people both because sometimes you're on your phone and you sign up for a thing, but you can't actually open the PDF right now. You don't have time, but you know that it's in your email later and you can look at it later. Or maybe you did download it right after from the website, but then you can't find it on your computer and you have the email that you can go back to and find it again, right? So it's about helping, you know, being the most useful to your audience. Um, okay, so that's the basics of setting up the forms. Use your branding, use your colors. Make sure you're paying attention to um, contrast, right? So like I've got this really dark background color here. It would be really not a great idea to put like black text on top of it because that would not be super easy for people to read. All right, let's jump back in. Forms, okay. MailChimp does four types of campaigns. They call it campaigns. Um, it's your newsletter, it's your e-blast, it's you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, regular old campaign is the basic. You can also do an RSS campaign. So you can have it so that people can subscribe to your blog posts, right? We've all seen that, sign up here to get the blog posts in your email kind of thing. And with an RSS campaign, you set up the template in MailChimp, you tell it to look for new new um, post items every however often, every week, every day, every month, whatever. And so at that designated time, if it's every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., you tell it to check the feed, it'll go. And anything that's new, it will automatically send out to your list in your mail template formatted with your branding and everything like that. So that's good to do if you're doing um, blog posts. Um, trying to think elegant themes is one of the ones that I know of that does this all the time. You sign up for their, you get, I get their blog posts in my email and it's just the excerpt. It's the title and the first little bit of it just to kind of whet the appetite and then if you're interested you click through and read the rest of it on their blog. But that way I don't have to go to their website to see what they're talking about now, what the new post is about, it's there. And if people don't catch it on social media or if you're not sharing it on social media, that's a way to get it out to your audience on a regular basis. You can also do a plain text email, so that would be no pretty pictures, no colors, no hyperlinks, no images, none of that stuff. Um, some people like to do those, a lot of internet marketers I see doing those because I have heard anecdotally, I have not tested this, I do not know for sure, <clears throat> but I've heard anecdotally that if it's just a text email, if there's no HTML aspect of it, it automatically bypasses that promotions tab in Gmail that all of your pretty links get stuck in. So if you want to make sure you actually end up in their inbox um, and you don't need to use graphics, you might want to try a plain text campaign. There's also A-B testing, which is hard to do in the beginning when you don't have a huge list. It's much more beneficial to do when you have a larger list, but it allows you to test two different aspects and see which one does better. So which subject line is going to get the most opens, A or B? Which image is going to get the most clicks, A or B? And you can test two different versions and it will basically send, you know, one version to half of the list and one version to the other half of the list and you can compare the stats so then you know moving forward this kind of thing works better, that kind of, that kind of thing. <clears throat> And now let's go look at campaigns. All right, so to start the campaigns, you're going to go to campaigns tab and wait for it to open. 
Do, 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 do. Wait, that might be copyrighted. I can't do that on live. You can also do, um, just so you're not surprised if you log in and see this, you can actually manage like Facebook ads and stuff now through MailChimp. I haven't played with it. The option is always there. We'll see it in a second if this ever loads. Um, <sighs> Seriously. It's fun when you work with technology and sometimes it hates you. Okay, so we're going to create a campaign. It's going to say what kind of campaign do you want to do. So we're going to start with an email. Uh, we're going to give it a title. The campaign name is only for you. So you can say it's the 927 email. You can say it's the October webinar reminder, right? Like this is for your information. The visitor is never going to see the campaign name. They might see the list name. They're not going to see the campaign name. And you can see here we I went too fast. We had the choice between a regular, an automated, um, the RSS, and the other one. So we'll I'll go over those in a minute. But so this is just for like your regular one if this is your newsletter. And um, these are date-based. Um, so you can send it out now when you're done with it. You can set, schedule it to go out next Tuesday or whatever. So you could actually preload four weeks worth of newsletters all at once. You know what the content is going to be and then you can send it out. So when you get those emails that are like, hey, right now I'm hanging out on the beach with my family, I'm pretty sure they're probably not hanging out on the beach. I'm pretty sure they scheduled that. Because if I'm hanging out on the beach with my family, I'm not going to be sitting there trying to type on my phone in a tiny little box. That's just me. You're going to pick which list you can send it to. If you wanted to send it to multiple lists, you have to create the campaign twice and select the appropriate list each time. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab this one. And then you have options of do you want to save it, send it to the entire list or some different sections and different segments. Segments are kind of cool because you can do a lot of fun things with them. So you can send a message out to people that are on a specific list that haven't opened the last five campaigns. And you could say, hey, I noticed you haven't opened the last five campaigns. Is this not the kind of information that you want to hear about or something like that? So you can kind of target the message to that. You could maybe send a bonus only to people that opened the last campaign. Um, so if we look at this, there's some pre-built segments. You can do some other stuff uh, based on customer behavior, demographics, if you have this information. So your list might not, you know, it, it's not giving me the option to pick male or female because I don't have that information on my list. But if you're collecting it, then you can target your message based on that information. Um, and then if we look at building a custom segment, it's going to take us to a knowledge base article. Um, and then if we wanted to pick a new segment, so we can say, um, you know, if they were added, maybe it's you want to send your last campaign, which you sent two weeks ago, but you've had a whole bunch of new people because you were just talking at an event and you want them to see that last campaign. So you can send that campaign to anybody that's been added since, you know, date added is after a specific date, right? Or is before a specific date or was, is within a certain time frame. There's a lot of different ways that you can, um, that you can do different stuff with this. So there, and there's, there's powerful tools in that. Um, you can send it, again, to people that didn't open the last campaign and just remind them. And sometimes that can be a good tool to figure out when people will actually open the campaign. So are they more likely to open it on Monday or Tuesday? Or maybe it's morning versus afternoon. And once you can kind of get that information, then it can help you learn when to send your campaigns so that they're going to get open, read, and acted on faster. <clears throat> see if it times out again okay so campaign name again internal use only but then the email subject so this is what you're putting to them this is what they're going to see um, 
It does support emojis. So if you know the alt characters to add the little sunshine or the clappy hands or a rainbow or whatever, you can put those in here too, right? I do that sometimes for clients. She does a lot of like, you know, we're going to be doing a teleclass or how's, you know, here's some summer tips and stuff like that. So we had sunshine and beach things and stuff like that. Because when you're looking at your inbox and everything's text, 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 ooh, picture, right? It, it draws attention. So, but you don't want to use it all, like all emojis. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I should try that. I haven't tested that one. That could be fun. Um, preview text is exactly what it says. Some inboxes are set up so that they show a little bit of the message. So you can tailor this instead of it only showing the first 20 characters of the message, you can actually put in a specific uh, snippet that you want to use there. The from name and the from email address, it picks up from the default information that you set up when you set up your account, but you can change it. So maybe for this particular one, it's a different persona. I have some on here for um, a loose co-working group that we did and stuff, and I might use a different email address for that or a different name associated with it. And I usually try to do, um, for the from name, my name as well as the website, because some people might recognize the website name, some people might recognize my name, so when they're scrolling through their inbox trying to figure out which one's junk and which one they want to pay attention to, you want to kind of, and I don't know that they're all going to recognize my name, but maybe they'll recognize the website name or vice versa. So I put the, both of those in the from name so that it gives them a better chance, gives me a better chance. Um, you can track opens, you can track clicks, you can do, if you have it connected to an e-commerce website, you can do some stuff there. If you have a Google Analytics account, you can um, do some connections there. You can have them auto-tweeted on Twitter or go out to Facebook so your campaign actually is going out to people automatically on those social media profiles which might get more people to subscribe to you. And then we're going to click next. And then you're going to pick a template. So they have a bunch of pre-made templates here. You can see there's all kinds of different layouts and they're fairly easy to use up here. And then here's some more basic setups. Pick the one that you want. Um, I would try to aim for consistency, something that you know you're going to use a lot. I would consider that something like three columns, even on my computer, that's a lot for me to look at. Um, I tend to stick to either a one column or maybe a two column section like that. That's what I have found I'm most comfortable viewing. Um, I haven't tested it. I'm just giving you my experience. Or you can make your own templates or you can start with one of these templates and save it to use the next time so you don't have to recreate it every time, which is, which is nice. So I have some saved templates. Man, this used to be, can we, can we look at this? This lovely gem, oh, the picture's not showing, right? Used to be my newsletter template. It was my coffee break. I had coffee cups up there. I love coffee. I thought it was funny. It, no, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> So you can also, oh wait, that's not the one I wanted, and go back and change it. You can click on the navigation down here. Um, so this is the one I tend to use these days. We're going to change the template because I already started with something else. And then you can go in here, and once I click in the area that I want to edit, the editor actually comes up on the other side. So if the widget was specifically for a picture, this is going to change into like a file, uh, file selector for a picture and stuff like that. It's pretty easy. It's just like typing in at this point, you know, uh, a Google Doc or Word or anything like that. You can type in. You can add pictures. Um, so you can upload pictures from your computer. I have some cute ones we're going to add here. It's sushi. So you can upload them from your computer pretty easily and set the information if you want it to be a link to somewhere. If you click show image style options here, you can say maybe I want it to be um, right aligned so that the text wraps around it and looks better. And we can save and insert. But you can also... Um, I really put that smack dab in the middle. Awesome. You can also um, import it from a URL. So if you've added it to your website already, um, you can add it in here. If you are getting an image from a stock website, kind of like I'm doing right now, but this is only for demonstration purposes, don't link directly to the image file on a stock website. Don't link directly to an image file on somebody else's website unless you have permission to do so. That's called hot linking. It can get you in trouble. 
And don't just grab images from Google Photos and think that you can use them. That's called, um, that's copyright infringement. And you get lovely cease and desist letters with big fines attached to them. But like if this was a picture that I had on my website and I didn't want to save it and upload it again and stuff like that, I can just click import and it'll, um, it'll do that. It'll apparently yell at me because it had the wrong file type. Normally it works. Only when I'm demonstrating, does it not? <coughs> Um, and then if you clicked the image button by mistake and you don't actually want to upload a picture, you just click the X and you go back into the editor. So your basic set of tools is here. We're going to go ahead and click next. We're good. I'm happy with how it looks. And it's going to go through a little bit of a checklist here. You've picked a list. You've picked a subject line. Um, you have the email address set. If there is any um, starter text that's something like, the, the little clues that it gives you. Use this area for a short description. You'll get a little, um, it'll tell you here, like you need to go back and fix that. So right now I have all checks. I'm good. Everything is excellent. I could send this out right now. You can schedule it to go out in the future. So you can preload all of your stuff, you know. You could preload all of your newsletters for the next year if you really wanted to. And then a date and time. Um, and we're going to go ahead and click schedule. And it's going to give you a high five. This is why I like MailChimp. It has a personality. Um, when you actually send a campaign, so instead of the scheduling like I did, but an actual scheduling, it does the little monkey hand comes up to give you a high five. If you click on that monkey hand five times, it takes you to a little game. Right, MailChimp has personality. I like them. Um, Let's go look at real quick if we wanted to do an RSS campaign. Oh, real quick, because I'm running out of time. And then we're going to get to the automation for you in one second. So back to create an email. We're going to go, where did it go? Maybe it's under automated now. Yeah. So here we go to the um, automated and share blog updates. Again, campaign name. Pick a list, and then you're going to put in the feed URL. So if you're using a WordPress site, you can just put in the website URL, and it'll figure it out. Any, any other kind of um, blogging service will tell you what the feed URL is. But this is basically, OK, I want you to check every week, uh, Monday at 2 PM. Yes, resize any images if you were using bigger images to fit the blog template, right? Make them smaller to fit into the email template. Excellent. We've got that. Uh, we're going to wait for it to catch up. You're going to pick your list and the segments and all of that stuff if you want to. We're going to go through a lot of the same steps we just saw. Um, the email subject then. So this little guy here is it'll automatically pick up then the title from the RSS feed. So it's posts from my blog title, right, for this blog date, and it'll automatically fix those. It's kind of like the, um, I forget, the, the macros or something you used to use in Word, right, where it'll automatically put in the information that it needs. Um, and then again, you can pick the template, so your, your template, um, if you have a specific framework that you want it to be in, maybe you have a different one for your newsletter versus your blog post. Like, that's okay, that's fine. You can have a bunch of different ones as long as they continue the branding. You don't want it to be confusing for your audience. And then when we look at the design, this is where you're going to actually kind of pick. It's going to make me pick a template. The design part is where you actually get to pick what parts of the blog feed do you want to show. I'm going to delete all of this. We're going to use our merge tags. Um, we got our RSS feed item. So like there's, and this is just going to put in like that whole chunk. And right now it actually has it formatted as an H1. There's some ways that you can customize it. You have to kind of play with them a little bit. There's some information on MailChimp's um, knowledge base articles about what the different individual components are. Like right now it's just going to grab 
the blog post and for each blog post that fits the criteria, it's going to put it in in a certain format. If you don't like that default format, you can go in and kind of customize it. I want the title in bold, I want a picture over here, I want the text in this font and that kind of stuff. Um, but you're going to have to then put in the individual uh, um, merge tags for those different elements. And for automation, automation is a little bit harder. Because you have to, but it's just like if you're setting up seven emails at a time, you just have to get them all set up. So again, create a campaign. And you can do lots of different automation ones. The key to remember with the automation is that it's based on, it's activity based of when they start versus date based, right? So it's not going on September 1st and September 15th and October 1st. It's going the day they sign up and the day after they sign up. So whether they sign up today or three weeks from now, they're still getting that first email the day they sign up. And that's typically what you want. That's the drip campaign. It's oftentimes used for um, e-courses or for, you know, thanks for joining our organization, here's some of the services that we offer for nonprofits or even for a business, right, here's some services that I offer. If you do, even if you just do something simple like a lead magnet, you could set up an automation so that first message is they get the report and then maybe a week later you follow up with them and say, hey, what did you think of the report? Did you open it yet? Do you have questions? Like there's those ways that you can continue to engage without you sitting there every Monday trying to, um, trying to send out the messages to that particular group. It handles all of that segmentation for you. You can do happy birthday messages, you can do anniversary messages, if you have that information in your list, okay? So if you're just collecting an email address, you can't send happy birthday, because MailChimp doesn't know when their birthday is, it's not stalking them. Um, <clears throat> so share blog updates is one that we just did, um, and that's a little bit different, because that's, that's, you set it up one time and it just kind of runs. But right, so let's look at the um, well. I did the welcome new subscribers. I don't know if you saw that here. We did welcome new subscribers, and then we can do an onboarding series or an education series, and that's kind of what you're looking for. So again, you have the name. You're going to pick a list. We're going to say start. You're going to go through similar setups, right? Like what is it called? Um, who are we sending it to? All of that sort of stuff. And then you set your trigger first. So when do they get this? Is this one, we want them to get this, I'm gonna say immediately after they get that first message, immediately after they sign up for the list. Um, and then the next one would be one day after they're sent the previous email. You could make it one week, you could make it two days, you could make it three hours, you can make it whatever you want, but then it's based on when they got the previous email. Right, so you're stacking them based on that. And then you're gonna go into each one and do, the and, and do the design. So you're gonna pick the template, you're gonna add the content, all of that kind of stuff. You're gonna select the subject, the preview text, the same thing we just did for a one campaign thing, you have to do it then for all of them. Um, when you're done, would you save and return to workflow and it takes you back to that, ugh. It won't let me. There was a required field. Okay. And now, and you don't have to, so we're still designing each of them, right? After we get through designing one, like that one's done. Um, but until you have designed them all and basically said, I am ready for these to go, it's not going to start sending. So if we have it set up, to go immediately when somebody joins my list. Until I tell it, okay, now you can start sending it to people, it's not gonna start doing that. So if it takes you three weeks to get all the pieces together, like that's fine, nobody's getting weird disjointed messages in the meantime. Um, right now it only has, it has the welcome and then there's two getting started messages, you can add more. Okay, so you would just say, add email, add more, keep going, go through and just keep adding them. Um, just I would say be careful how many you're adding and how often you're sending it to them so that you don't annoy them. And make the expectations clear up front, right? I'm sending you a seven day daily message or I'm gonna send you a message every Tuesday for the next six weeks, right? So then they know what to expect and they're not sitting there going, oh my God, it's her again, could she stop? 
uh, you know, just set the expectations so that they know what they're doing. Okay? All right. Yes. And I just want to jump through in like the last two minutes. Does anybody have any questions? I know I kind of ran through a bunch of this, but you guys all seemed pretty savvy. Um, some other kinds of messages you can send, you know, the seasonal messages, holiday messages, um, testimonials. You can send out testimonials to people or video testimonials or explainer videos. You can't put a video in the email, but if you wanted to, like, you have a picture that links over to, like, a YouTube video or something, you can do that. You can't embed a video in an email, though. Do you have a question? Yeah. On your actual lead magnet page where you're giving your subscribers, mm -hmm. I am the wrong person to ask that question because I am terrible at promoting my own lead magnet. Um, I want to do better. Um, I am been very fortunate and very blessed that I get enough word of mouth traffic for my like one-on-one -on -one services. Um, I want to build more of that automated income kind of stuff, but I don't have the time to focus on that as much as I want to because I'm doing the one-on-one -on -one work, which, which again, I'm blessed, but I also would like to have the, um, the residual income. So, um, however, I know that I've seen lots of different tactics, and of course, I'm sure you've seen a bunch too. I think it just depends on your audience and your market. Um, you know, I'm for the, the, like the WP Toolbox, that's mostly geared at um, entrepreneurs that are just kind of starting their own business. So I'm going to be putting that um, in the right Facebook groups on the, on the days and you're allowed to share those things. Or I want to play with um, Pinterest and putting it on different Pinterest boards and, you know, different, because I've seen people do 16 different pictures that all link to the same one, but they're using different images. So it gets, you know, and then you're finding out too, which ones, which images people are connecting with more, which style and that kind of thing. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of information to actually answer that question because I'm kind of lazy on that one. <laughs> but I want to do better. So maybe next year I'll come back and I'll have a better answer for you. That'll be my goal uh, for this. Okay? All right. Anybody else? In the last, like, 30 seconds before somebody else comes in? <laughs> okay. Right. And I mean, just start, start with writing the content because I, I've seen people get way too hung up on the process and the funnel and what does the form look like and what do my pictures look like and then I don't have content. And I know that there's a lot of people that tell you to go ahead and promote it before you have it built. But I feel like unless you have the actual self-motivation to do that, you're going to have a whole lot of people expecting a message on October 15th and you didn't write it yet, or you're going to be up until midnight getting that stuff set up in MailChimp. Um, so start with the content, and sometimes you might discover that as you're writing out the content and the different pieces, maybe you feel like it needs to be seven instead of six. Maybe two of these things are combined, and but, but you want to add this other thing, and maybe that's going to change the images that you use and that kind of thing. So, you know, I, and I tell people this with websites all the time, don't start jumping into design until you figure out the content. And the same really goes with the email. You have to make sure that the design fits the content and not the other way around, because the content is the most important part. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then it's a poor converting thing, and you find out you don't have a market match with what your condition needs to go. Yeah. But you're still, like, if you're offering, if you're doing coaching services, you're going to offer something related to that. So, I mean, you start with it, but maybe you need to tweak and tailor it a little bit after you get that initial response. So just be prepared for that, too, is that um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but get it done. But I still feel like you need to get it done. Or, you know, if, if you get the content written, but you haven't 
got it all set up in MailChimp yet. Yeah, sure, go ahead and start sending people to the opt-in page, right? And tell them it's coming in two weeks or whatever. And then you've given yourself a deadline. There's some accountability in that. Um, but don't set yourself up for stress if you know it's going to take you more than three weeks. Like, okay, but if I tell them I have to have done in three weeks, I'm totally going to be on it. And that doesn't happen. And then it's two days before you're supposed to launch and you're pulling your hair out because why did I do this? So, all right, any other questions? Comments, cheers, karaoke, dancing. Thank you. Oh, I didn't mean cheers for me, but that works too. <laughs> I was thinking like rah rah, go team. No, no, okay. Um, if you want the slides, let me know and I can get them out to you or I might tweet them later, depending on if I remember that or not. Um, yeah, and if you have questions about the automation and stuff, feel free to. Um, I'll give you my business card. Feel free to send me an email because I do trainings randomly in different parts of the city. So maybe we can, you know, work on that and help get you situated. Okay? Excellent. Turning this bad boy off now. Ha.